Yo, okay, so hey guys, it's Quinston, and today we're gonna talk about this thing called the pigeonhole sort. Now, this is a very interesting algorithm that I came across, and I'm not sure what I, what I feel about this algorithm, but let's just get into it. So the pigeonhole sort is a sorting algorithm that works uh, for an array of integers. So basically, let's say you have an array of integers. It could be negative or positive or zero, non-zero values, any values, but they have to be integers. Uh, so it works for integers, it doesn't work for anything else. Plus, um, it might, so this just occurred to me, it's not part of the video, but an epiphany just occurred to me, like it could also be used for sorting alphabets, but yeah, that's just me. Anyway, it works best when the number of elements and the number of possible key values is the same in that array. Uh, what basically means that um, every element is close to being unique or, you know, multiple instances of the same element exist. So, Let's say, for example, in this, uh, the length of this is 10. I'll just count it, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So the length of the array is 10. And the other thing is that every element is unique, which means the key value, key values, the key values, that is, that is the elements are unique. Now, it also works well when there are, I mean, I'm not sure if I can say it works well, but it also works when there are multiple instances of the same element, like eight is repeated or nine is repeated or some elements are repeated, that's also fine. It works correctly, but you need to make sure that it's an integer, it is not a floating value. Um, and on top of that, um, it works best, so best being the keyword, quote unquote best, when uh, the number of elements are, uh, you know, possible key values is the same. Okay, now let's just go into the, the algorithm itself because that's what this video is about. So you have the array over here and you have these elements and then I'm gonna just say, I'm gonna call the function and pass the array inside of the function and then whatever the output is gonna be, you know, I'm gonna print it out. Simple Python code. So let's just go into the pigeonhole or sort algorithm. And here, when we get over here, you say, get the smallest element in the array. So the first thing is, uh, you need to get the smallest and the largest element in the array. Now, this is not a comparison based algorithm. Now, this is not an algorithm like bubble sort where you compare the first, second values. No, no, no. It doesn't work like that. It works on the value. It basically triggers the value of that particular array. It uses that value to sort the array. So you need to understand that. You need to understand that it basically um, messes with the value of the element inside the arrays, each of those values to basically sort itself. So there is no comparison here. So what you do is you get the min, and the max of the array and you store it. So you get the, the smallest integer in the array and the largest integer in the array, which is obviously this is a function called min of array. So this function is built into Python. What this function basically does is it goes through the array and finds the biggest, uh, smallest element and gives it back. And in this case, it goes through the array, finds the biggest element and gives it back. So we, here in this, uh, in this variable called the smallest integer in array and the largest integer, we store the min and the max uh, respectively. So after that, you basically come to this part over here where you get an estimate of the number of holes needed. So what is holes? So holes are basically the an estimate for the amount of integer, uh, unique integers that are present inside of your array. So an estimate for a good amount of unique integers that exist would be um, the max minus min plus one. Why does that uh, become valid? Simply because the largest element minus the smallest element will basically entail all of the other elements, right? And all of the other elements are I, I have to be between 10 and one in this case. Realistically, practically, you will never be able to guess right off the bat at the initial start how many holes you need. So to make the best estimate, you basically say, okay, largest minus smallest plus one, that's my you know, best estimate of the most unique elements or, or the unique elements that exist inside of the array. Now, you have to create holes, right? You have to create these holes. Now, these, this is just the number of holes, but in order to actually um, execute the entire um, algorithm, you actually need the amount of holes you know existing in in the memory space of the computer in the RAM. So you need to have actual space where you can store it. So this is where you generate the list. So holes is an array, and then you, for x in range of zero to number of holes, this is basically a for loop which says um, holes dot append zero. So you're gonna append 
um, up till the range of the number of holes. You're gonna append zeros in this so that you have an array of, so at the end of this, this basically looks like uh, an array which has uh, a lot of zeros in it and, and that's basically what it looks like. So you're gonna create an array of zeros with the length of number of holes. So you can do this in any language in Python. I think this is the most simplest way to do it. There are other ways which are faster and uh, you know have can be done in a single line, but I thought this was the best because yo, it is very, very um, descriptive. So in order to basically go through this entire thing, you need to fill the holes, right? Now you created the array for the holes, but it's pretty much pointless if you don't fill them up. So for filling them up, we have to go over uh, and iterate over this particular array and then at the end of it we will basically understand what to do. So for x in array, so for this is a, a for each loop which basically treats x as one individual element in the array at a time. So for x in array, holes of x minus the smallest integer in array plus equal to one. What does this mean? It means that, um, okay, so the basics are that every array starts from zero, okay? Every array starts from zero. Now imagine this uh, value was 10,000 and imagine this value was, you know, like 2,000, okay? So 10,000 and 2,000 are the min and max of an array. Now, if you subtract 10,000, 2,000, your, 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 um, your length will be 8,000, right? But if your length is 8,000, then for X of 10,000, you have no place. You have no element, right, to place. So the, min, the max value also needs to be placed in some hole but your array is not big enough. So what do you need to do? You need to uh, basically subtract it and normalize the, the range. So you need to normalize it. So in order to normalize that range, you basically subtract it from the smallest integer in the array because that is the commonest, the, the most common value that everybody has. So everybody, everybody's value in the array is, is going to include the smallest integer. So the best way to normalize the array is to subtract every element by the smallest integer in the array. And by doing that, you basically generate a value that exists, an index that exists in the particular uh, holes array. So once you do this, so for example, if X is the smallest element, right? If X is the smallest element uh, in the array, then X minus, you know, smallest element is gonna be zero. So this minus this is gonna be the same value. So they're gonna be zero and then holes of zero plus equal to one. You know what I'm what, what I'm saying right now. If it's the largest el element, so if x is the largest element, then uh, it's going to be holes of length minus one, which is the final element in the the holes array, plus equal to one. So every other element will fit in between, and it will just work. So that's just how it works, and that's how you populate or fill the holes. I know that sounds very inappropriate, but that's just how it's done. Then at the end of it, you need to create the sorted array, right? At the end of it, you need to create that sorted array and pick out every element from the whole so that you can generate the sorted array. So I'm just gonna write sorted array is equal to this uh, brace brackets, open and close. And I'm gonna, just gonna populate everything in this particular part. I'm not gonna do anything fancy or, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna save space or space complexity or time, com no, 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 this, uh, this, the aim of this tutorial is to conceptually under, uh, make you understand the, the pigeonhole principle or the pigeonhole um, sort. So you have the sorted array over here and now I'm gonna go over the number of holes or the holes array. So for count in range of number of holes. So what I could also write over here is the length or the length of holes. So I can even write length of holes. Basically, it's just the same. So it's because the length of holes and the number of holes is literally the same value. So for so I'm saying that um, for count in range of number of holes, which means that count goes from zero to number of holes. So count's value goes, so count this value over here goes from, in the for loop goes from zero to number of holes and it ends. So also the number of elements inside these holes. So while, Holes of count is greater than zero. So holes of count, if uh, count goes from zero to number of holes, which means that you're iterating over the array. And when you do plus equal to one, you basically say that, okay, this value over here exists. If you say multiple times plus one, it means it exists multiple times. So uh, it could even mean that some values, let's say I repeat eight like five times, this is also eight and then this is also eight. And if I re repeat eight like five times, it means that 
the whole amount of eight is going to be through the roof. It's going to be like really large. It's going to be five, which is why I need to subtract it and then add, subtract and then add. So how do I actually add the element to my sorted array? What I do is I say sorted array or depend. I take the count value, which is the index, and I add the smallest integer in the array. Remember, we normalized the um, the value in the array. Now we need to denormalize it so that we can add it to the sorted array. So how do we denormalize it? We just add the smallest integer in the array to it, and that's done. So that's how it basically works. You you basically and and, and then if there are multiple instances of the element, then you just say subtract, add again, subtract, add again, so that you know if I write eight over here. And then I'll just run this one more time, just once I'll show it to you. You get a value where eight is twice, and that's just how it works. So, um, so that's how it basically exists. Like uh, the whole point is this populations um, strategy over here. What it basically does is that it arranges the array according to its value. So if x is really big, then it's going to be placed in the later part of the array, and if x is really small is gonna play, be placed in the front side of the array and every element in the middle is gonna be arranged according to its value. So because of the strategy over here. And that's just how it works. And that's just how the pigeonhole principle is sorted. But it's now in, in theory, this is a very fast algorithm. It's really fast, uh, but it only works for a limited amount of situations which is its limitation. So, um, I mean, that's how it works. So it's a weird algorithm, I would admit, like it's a weird algorithm, but it works. Um, so yeah, you can find this code in the description always, as always, um, I would like to thank everybody who's watching this. Um, you know, I, I, I thoroughly appreciate you watching my videos and uh, like, share and subscribe, share it with somebody who thinks they know what a pigeonhole principle, a pigeonhole sort is. Uh, but you want them to understand it deeper. Um, thanks for watching, guys. I will see you in the next video.